yang mungkin jauh, semakin jauh, Udah tidak ada. link and match. Nah, ini harus dipastikan. Kalau industri membutuhkan asing pecel, kompeten yang hard skill dan soft skillnya imbang, seperti tadi komplain soft skillnya kurang, maka harusnya di sini juga benar-benar nasi pecel. Industri dan dunia kerja, mungkin ada yang sudah puas, ada yang lumayan puas, 
tapi juga ada yang tidak puas terhadap lulusan kampus atau SMK. Mereka sering bertanya, ini kenapa masih diajarkan materi-materi yang sudah nggak perlu diajarkan? Atau kadang-kadang mereka berpikir atau mereka bertanya-tanya, ini ada materi baru perkembangan di industri tidak diajarkan. Justru tidak diajarkan di perkuliahan dan pembelajaran. Atau mereka juga sering bertanya-tanya, kenapa kok soft skill lulusan kurang, ini kurang itu? Kenapa communication skill-nya kurang? Atau mungkin daya juang mereka, attitude mereka, sikap mereka ketika bekerja juga dinyatakan belum siap kerja. Nah, ini ada gap. Ini jelas ada gap. Masih ditambah dengan fakta, banyak orang yang masih beranggapan melihat satu data, mungkin dari tahun ke tahun, pengangguran dari lulusan SMK sudah berkurang. Tetapi masih dianggap terlalu banyak. Di tengah-tengah harapan besar rakyat Indonesia, pendidikan vokasi akan mampu menghasilkan SDM yang kompeten dan unggul. Situasi ini kemudian juga ditambah dengan beberapa pihak yang masih gregeten, masih penasaran, ini kenapa kok belum bisa vokasi menjadi andalan kita. Sehingga misalnya DPR membentuk panja vokasi, satu panja khusus untuk meneliti, mengeses, mencari tahu, mencari jawab kenapa vokasi belum bisa diandalkan. Dan ditambah lagi, Bapenas beserta pihak-pihak yang lain, kementerian yang lain juga sedang menyusun buku putih untuk mencari jawabannya. Kenapa vokasi masih belum bisa maksimal. Nah, sekali lagi ini ada gap antara vokasi, kampus vokasi, SMK, dengan industri. Mungkin industri itu membutuhkan atau ingin makan nasi pecel yang istimewa. Apakah kampus atau SMK sudah memasak nasi pecel? Atau jangan-jangan ini nasi pecel diinginkan, tetapi ini jangan-jangan ini bukan nasi pecel. Mungkin ini gado-gado, tidak ada nasi putihnya, tidak ada komponen yang diharapkan industri secara menyeluruh. Atau mungkin ini bukan nasi gado-gado, tetapi ini nasi kecap telur yang mungkin jauh, semakin jauh, tidak link and match. Nah, ini yang harus dipastikan. Kalau industri membutuhkan nasi pecel, kompeten yang hard skill dan soft skill-nya imbang, seperti tadi komplain soft skill-nya kurang, maka harusnya di sini juga benar-benar nasi pecel. Kurikulum benar-benar harus menghasilkan nasi pecel yang sesuai dengan ini. Kita sepakat dulu, inilah nasi pecel yang diinginkan oleh industri. Nah, Untuk menciptakan output yang sesuai dengan industri ini, maka yaitu tadi harus link and match. Harus benar-benar dari awal duduk bersama untuk menyusun kurikulum, mengajar bersama, dan sebagainya. Situasi ini mari kita kupas. Bagaimana jawaban yang terbaik? Link and match itu adalah jawabannya, iya. Tetapi saya ingin masuk dari angle input, proses, output, dan outcome. Input, proses, output, dan outcome ini adalah satu kesatuan yang akan menjadi jawaban link and match seperti apa. Yang akan menjawab kebutuhan industri dengan SDM yang memang kompeten. Kalau berani menyatakan I am kompeten, bukannya aku sudah belajar apa. Kalau aku sudah belajar apa, itu hanya mengandalkan ijazah. Bukan I am kompeten, bukan aku mampu apa. Bahkan kita harus pastikan output ini benar-benar membuat outcome yang benar-benar membuat industri memiliki daya saing tinggi, produktivitas tinggi, sehingga itu akan menjadi penciptaan perkembangan ekonomi yang fantastis, terdorong dengan output SDM yang unggul dan kompeten ini tadi. Untuk mencapai output ini, proses ada banyak hal yang harus kita lakukan. Misalnya, link and match. Kurikulum, pengajar, magang, komitmen serapan industri, dan sebagainya. Ada sembilan minimal. Ya. Cek ini. Kompetensi yang akan dihasilkan tentunya adalah hard skill, soft skill yang imbang. Serta dibungkus dengan attitude, karakter positif, kejujuran, integritas. Itu yang harus dipastikan ada di kurikulum. Yang kedua, saya ingin fokus pada kurikulum. 
Karena kurikulum ini adalah resep utama yang harus diperdalam Dan ini kita akan merilis banyak kebijakan untuk benar-benar seluruh kampus vokasi dan SMK merubah kurikulumnya Sehingga menjadi lebih adaptif dan sesuai dengan kebutuhan pasar Kurikulum yang memastikan soft skill-nya harus kuat Kurikulum memastikan penciptaan karakter, integritas, attitude, semangat, kejujuran, dan sebagainya pada lulusan. Kurikulum yang mengimplementasikan project based learning atau case method learning atau case based learning. Kurikulum itu penting. Yang ketiga pada proses adalah guru dan dosen harus berubah. Harus dikembangkan sehingga tidak hanya menjadi pengajar tetapi sebagai mentor, sebagai coach, sebagai fasilitator, bahkan sebagai teman dan sebagainya. Ada banyak yang lain, misalnya leadership kepala sekolah, dekan, direktur politeknik harus ditingkatkan. Kemudian kita mengembangkan D4 fast track dengan Jerman. Misalnya D4 itu tahun keempat full ke Jerman tambah setahun. Maka mereka akan lulus sebagai S2 terapan dari Jerman dan mungkin dari Taiwan. Sehingga itu dinamakan program D4 atau Sarjana Terapan Fast Track dengan S2 terapan di luar negeri. Kemudian kita juga memikirkan bagaimana SMK nanti akan dikembangkan menjadi SMK Fast Track lulus mendapatkan ijazah D2. Dan di situ ada percepatan waktu pembelajaran dan pertambahan waktu pembelajaran di SMK Fast Track mayoritas itu untuk magang atau apprenticeship program. Magang sambil kuliah dan belajar. Ini mirip dengan dual system yang ada di Jerman, di vokasi di Jerman. Kemudian RPL juga kita berlakukan dengan optimal. Next, kita berpikir bahwa lulusan harus menghasilkan hasil karya riset terapan, sertifikat kompetensi dan sebagainya dan sebagainya. Jadi ada banyak sekali inovasi pada proses ini. Harapannya apa? Harapannya proses yang inovatif ini menciptakan ekosistem yang dinamik dan memperkuat soft skill, hard skill seimbang, menghasilkan lulusan yang sesuai dengan kebutuhan dunia kerja, dan akan menghasilkan outcome. Outcome-nya adalah dengan SDM yang memang unggul dan kompeten, industri akan diuntungkan. Industri akan mendapatkan satu Kenyataan bahwa mereka sangat mudah untuk menarik SDM terbaik yang semuanya baik. Semuanya pada standar tinggi yang akan menciptakan kenaikan produktivitas mereka secara signifikan, serta mereka atau industri akan sangat menghargai lulusan-lulusan vokasi yang memang kompeten. Dengan apa? Karir yang baik dan gaji yang sangat baik. Dan itu semua akan kembali pada input. Input itu kan menjadi kunci utama. Kalau sampai proses sudah baik, kemudian outputnya kita harapkan baik dan kita mengharapkan outcome yang baik, tidak mungkin input itu tidak yang terbaik. Input adalah siswa baru SMK atau mahasiswa baru vokasi. Kita bayangkan, seandainya mayoritas anak-anak SMK masuk ke SMK dulu karena tidak passion, tidak punya visi, ngapain saya memilih SMK ini? Atau mereka memilih SMK hanya gara-gara tidak terima di SMA? Atau mungkin mereka memilih SMK karena terpaksa? Atau mereka hanya pengen segera dapat kerja? Mereka pikir dengan tiga tahun di SMK, kemudian dapat ijazah, dan kemudian pasti dapat kerja. Itu bukan yang membuat mereka mendapat pekerjaan adalah kompetensinya. Nah, ini harus benar-benar menjadi PR besar kita. Siapa mereka? Anak-anak SMP dan orang tuanya. Anak-anak SMA dan orang tuanya. Saya bilang dan orang tuanya. Semua harus memahami bahwa 
anak memilih tempat kuliah atau tempat sekolah itu karena passion. Bukan karena orang tua berpikir atau membayangkan anaknya harus bekerja kantoran dengan gaji yang baik dan mereka harus masuk ke S1 apa atau ke ekonomi. Padahal belum tentu passion. Ini menjadi PR. Kita harus membali ini semua. Begini perumpamannya, kita bayangkan seseorang memilih tempat kuliah atau tempat studi, tetapi tidak terlalu dengan passion. Itu ibaratnya seperti dia menikah dengan seseorang yang dia tidak cintai. Kalau kelak dia membayangkan bekerja di bidang yang dia pilih, dan dia bisa membayangkan sebuah satu rasa kegembiraan, kesenangan, kebahagiaan melakukan pekerjaan itu, itu akan menjadi indikator bahwa dia itu passion. Dia akan melakukan pekerjaan itu dengan bahagia. Gaji menjadi efek berikutnya. Dia akan terus belajar dan dia akan terus mengembangkan dirinya meskipun dia sudah selesai studi di SMK atau kuliah. Untuk SMK Fast Track D2 ini, tentunya kita tidak akan membuat seluruh SMK berubah menjadi SMK Fast Track 4,5 tahun. Sebagian besar SMK tentunya akan tetap 3 tahun. Tergantung kebutuhan di industri. Dan SMK Fast Track ini harus dikembangkan dengan syarat pernikahan segitiga. SMK, industri, dan kampus vokasi. Bisa politeknik, bisa universitas, bisa institut yang memiliki prodi vokasi, yang memiliki prodi D2. Harus tiga ini. Sejak awal duduk bersama, menyusun kurikulum dari semester 1 di SMK, mengajar bersama sejak dari semester 1, merancang magangnya sejak semester 1, dan disitulah akan menjadi kekuatan yang lebih dari seorang lulusan SMK. Dari tiga tahun menjadi empat setengah tahun, tetapi tiga semester full magang di industri. Kompetensinya akan lebih tajam. Sertifikat kompetensi akan lebih banyak lagi. Dan mereka akan menghasilkan karya yang lebih banyak yang menjadi portofolio mereka ketika lulus. Sehingga ini menjadi keistimewaan besar ketika SMK menjadi empat setengah tahun, tidak membebani siswa SMK. Karena apa? Tiga semester akhir, atau tiga semester magang di akhir, itu mendapatkan gaji. Sehingga tentunya ini akan menjadi percepatan. Di Jepang, SMK itu lima tahun. Di Jerman, pendidikan vokasi di perguruan tinggi minimal bachelor. Dan ini kita akan gabungkan menjadi konsep vokasi Indonesia. SMK, perguruan tinggi yang seamless. Perguruan tinggi maupun juga kita koneksikan dengan S2 terapan, baik di dalam maupun di luar negeri. Jadi, kita perdalam pada inovasi proses yang tadi saya sampaikan. Salah satunya adalah kita perkuat vokasi perguruan tinggi fokus pada bachelor dan D2. Bachelor dan D2, atau sarjana terapan dan D2. Untuk sarjana terapan, kita bisa merancang satu syarat kelulusan mahasiswa D4 Tangan kanan pegang ijazah dan transkrip, sertifikat kompetensi, bahasa Inggris yang lumayan baik untuk berkomunikasi dengan dunia luar. Tangan kiri pegang produk atau hasil karya riset terapan. Dan ini akan menjadi satu kelengkapan pembuktian bahwa dia sudah kompeten. Dan itu harus dirancang bersama dengan industri dan dunia kerja sejak awal. Kurikulum Kampus Merdeka akan semakin menegaskan konsep ini. Sehingga ada kemerdekaan anak-anak vokasi atau mahasiswa vokasi untuk menentukan apakah dia akan menyelesaikan full di kampus dengan magang atau dia akan menghabiskan satu semester untuk melakukan kegiatan yang merdeka. Seperti yang bisa kita lihat di slide ini. Dengan mempertimbangkan itu semua, maka Direktorat Jenderal Pendidikan Vokasi Kemendikbud merancang puluhan program untuk mendorong terjadinya pernikahan massal seperti yang saya jelaskan tadi. Pernikahan massal antara kampus vokasi, SMK, lembaga kursus pelatihan dengan industri dan dunia kerja. Ini harus benar-benar link and match berkelanjutan 
akan mendalam. Puluhan program ini kita rilis. Misalnya, paket link and match atau pernikahan massal antara ratusan kampus vokasi, baik PTN maupun PTS dengan industri dan dunia kerja, dengan paket lengkap seperti yang tadi saya jelaskan. Kemudian, program training atau pelatihan, sertifikasi kompetensi bagi dosen dan instruktur di perguruan tinggi vokasi. Program sertifikasi kompetensi bagi ribuan mahasiswa vokasi. Pengembangan SMK Center of Excellence yang masing-masing bisa mendapatkan dana miliaran. Pengembangan karir center di SMK. Sertifikasi kompetensi siswa SMK. Pengembangan seribu materi pembelajaran berbasis video dan multimedia yang dikembangkan oleh ribuan guru-guru SMK se-Indonesia dan bisa dimanfaatkan bersama. Program bantuan fasilitas atau peralatan bagi SMK se-Indonesia. Program pelatihan kecakapan kerja bagi teman-teman kita yang putus sekolah atau pengangguran berjumlah 50 ribu orang dan masing-masing mendapatkan dana sekitar 4.250.000 untuk satu orang mengikuti pelatihan yang terintegrasi dengan industri dan disertifikasi kompetensi sehingga bisa langsung diterima kerja. 50.000 orang. Ditambah dengan 16.000 orang yang akan dilatih menjadi wirausaha di program kecakapan kewirausahaan. Pengembangan TUK dan LSP di SMK dan perguruan tinggi vokasi. Pengembangan kurikulum project based learning di SMK dan kampus vokasi. Dan itu semua apabila ditotal akan senilai sekitar lebih dari 3 triliun atau mungkin mencapai 3,4 triliun diwujudkan menjadi puluhan program untuk menerjemahkan link and match. Tidak hanya sekedar ide, wacana, atau ucapan tetapi betul-betul kita akan dorong itu terjadi pada tahun ini pula ketika new normal sudah terjadi. Kita harus yakinkan kepada anak SD, anak SMP bahwa memilih vokasi kalau mau kerja Politeknik Negeri Jakarta adalah perguruan tinggi negeri yang menyelenggarakan pendidikan vokasi dan mencetak sumber daya manusia yang siap kerja di dunia usaha dan dunia industri. Sebagian besar lulusan Politeknik Negeri Jakarta memiliki masa tunggu untuk bisa bekerja kurang dari tiga bulan, baik di perusahaan nasional maupun multinasional di dalam dan di luar negeri. Kami mampu mendidik dan melatih mahasiswa untuk menjadi sumber daya manusia yang unggul sesuai kebutuhan industri dan berdaya saing global. Karena kami menerapkan sistem pembelajaran yang menggabungkan ilmu dan teknologi dengan komposisi praktek 40 hingga 60 persen. Didukung oleh 360 dosen tetap, memiliki keahlian dan kompetensi yang bersertifikasi nasional maupun internasional, serta ketersediaan sarana dan prasarana pembelajaran yang mengikuti perkembangan teknologi, kerjasama titik industri dengan perusahaan nasional dan multinasional, serta keunggulan-keunggulan yang dimiliki oleh setiap program studi. Teknik Sipil PNJ memiliki beberapa keunggulan dalam laboratorium konstruksi dan laboratorium uji. Untuk pusat unggulan teknologi, didukung Structural Health Monitoring System dan Field Investigation. Misalnya, menguji kinerja jembatan baja dengan loading test berbasis lab view dan menguji ketahanan miniatur bangunan gedung tinggi terhadap getaran pada sumbu horizontal. Kami juga memiliki alat fatik yang di Indonesia hanya ada tiga saja. Tersedia lab scaffolding untuk kerjasama pelatihan dan tersedia alat kundit dan NDT untuk menguji kekuatan beton yang terbaru, serta lab bintek lah. Kami juga memiliki beberapa kerjasama link and match dengan industri, yaitu yang pertama kerjasama dengan PT Trakindo Indonesia. Kemudian yang kedua, kita punya kerjasama dengan PT Hocim, yaitu untuk teknik industri pengolahan semen. Yang ketiga, kita punya kerjasama dengan PT Badak Natural Gas di Bontang, kerjasama di bidang 
teknik kilang dan pengolahan gas. Kemudian yang keempat, kita kerjasama dengan PT Garuda Maintenance Facility untuk program teknik perawatan dan perbaikan pesawat udara. Semua program di jurusan teknik elektro didukung dengan sarana laboratorium dan workshop sesuai dengan kebutuhan industri. Salah satu unggulan laboratorium saat ini adalah PUTOI atau Pusat Unggulan Otomasi Industri Berbasis Teknologi Informasi dan Komunikasi. Sistem ini mengintegrasikan sistem SCADA, teknologi informasi, teknologi komputer, dan teknologi jaringan komunikasi data yang diterapkan pada miniatur industri otomasi pengolahan air atau water treatment. Selain itu, sebagian praktek, tugas akhir maupun skripsi yang dibuat oleh mahasiswa telah menerapkan teknologi smart dan IoT. Dengan begitu, jurusan teknik elektro telah masuk pada revolusi 4.0. Di jurusan akuntansi kami juga mempunyai bank mini, di mana bank mini itu kami jadikan sebagai lab untuk program studi keuangan dan perbankan, baik itu D3 maupun sarjana terapan, dan juga keuangan dan perbankan syariah. Untuk bidang komputer jaringan, kita memberikan membekali mahasiswa itu dengan sertifikasi Cisco. Untuk bidang programming dan database, kita memberikan membekali mahasiswa itu dengan sertifikasi Oracle. Dan untuk bidang multimedia, kita memberikan sertifikasi membekali mahasiswa, mahasiswa itu dengan sertifikasi Autodesk. Program studi yang diunggulkan adalah NICE, yang merupakan program studi sarjana terapan. Dan NICE adalah merupakan program studi pertama yang ada di Indonesia. Didirikan dan merupakan program studi yang menangani tentang event sesuai dengan judulnya yaitu Meeting, Incentive Travel, Convention, and Exhibition. Mesin Heidelberg ini bisa memenuhi kebutuhan industri printing and packaging berbasis pada ISO 126472. Dengan sendirinya, dengan ISO tersebut, maka mahasiswa kami bisa memiliki daya saing untuk bisa menuju uh, internasional. Keunggulan yang telah dicapai oleh peneliti di Politeknik Negeri Jakarta diantaranya adalah di bidang rekayasa material pada komponen sensor, kemasan yang ramah lingkungan, dan inovasi rekayasa bahan bakar. Serta menghasilkan beberapa paten diantaranya adalah peralatan pembuatan komposit, peralatan rekayasa bahan bakar, dan peralatan telekomunikasi. Sementara, di bidang pengabdian pada masyarakat, hingga saat ini sudah bekerja sama dengan beberapa pihak masyarakat, Pemda, dan Parlemen untuk penerapan teknologi pengolahan sampah kepada masyarakat. Di dalam administrasi umum dan keuangan, kami punya tanggung jawab terhadap tugas, layanan, dan pengolahan SDM, keuangan, aset, sarana, dan persana pendidikan, serta pendukung lainnya untuk mendukung program kerja direktur tahun 2020-2024 di bidang tata kelola dan menciptakan Smart and Green Campus. Pada saat ini, kami sedang membangun sistem terintegrasi yang terkoneksi dengan bidang akademik secara terpadu. Tata kelola keuangan PNJ pada tahun 2021 berupaya merubah status dari satker menjadi pada layanan umum agar lebih transparan, efisien, dan efektif. Bidang kemahasiswaan, kami berhasil meraih beberapa prestasi antara lain juara pertama kategori slalom dalam kompetisi mobil listrik nasional, juara pertama desain struktur bangunan tingkat Asia, meraih medali emas cabang karate dan silat pada pekan olahraga mahasiswa nasional, serta juara umum business administration competition. Kami juga mengirimkan mahasiswa pada program Student Exchange ke National Chinese University of Technology di Taiwan dan Intermark International Design College di Shanghai, serta membuka kelas internasional yang bekerja sama dengan Management Science University atau MSU dan Asia E-University di Malaysia. Kelas kerjasama ini bertujuan agar para lulusan Politeknik Negeri Jakarta dapat bekerja 
pada perusahaan asing di mancanegara. Pada mulanya sih saya tidak mengetahui secara detail program studi manajemen keuangan ini seperti apa sih. Tapi setelah saya berkuliah, setelah saya belajar, saya bisa mendapatkan ilmu-ilmu yang sangat bermanfaat untuk kehidupan saya, yaitu seperti teori-teori tentang investasi, pasar modal, dan juga manajemen keuangan. Saya bangga bisa berkuliah di B3 MP WNBK PNJ. Saya di sini belajar desain grafis, fotografi, animasi, dan sablon. Saya mempunyai impian dan cita-cita menjadi fotografer. Terima kasih. Kami selalu berkomitmen untuk membina calon penerus bangsa yang berkualitas melalui program-program studi unggulan kami di Politeknik Jakarta. Kami yakin Politeknik Negeri Jakarta adalah tempat yang tepat bagi Anda untuk menitipkan putra-putrinya. Agar menjadi pemimpin-pemimpin yang berkarakter, profesional, berdaya saing global, dan sukses dunia akhirat. Attention please, the seminar is about to begin. I would like to welcome the Honorable the Director of Polytechnic Negeri Jakarta, Doctor of Science Zainal Nur Arifin, Diploma Engineering, Hohire Technische Le Anstad, the Honorable Vice Directors of Polytechnic Negeri Jakarta, the Honorable the Heads of all Departments in Polytechnic Negeri Jakarta, the Honorable Invited Speakers, and all participants. Good afternoon everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, salam sejahtera, om swastiastu, namo buddhaya, salam kebajikan. First of all, praise be to God for his mercy, blessings, and guidance so we can attend and participate in this event. I, Sari Puspita Dewi, will be the master of ceremony for today's seminar. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome everyone again to the PNJ International Webinar Series 2020. With the theme, Sheffield Engineering on Industry and Higher Education, collaboration to enhance the quality and employability of graduates in the digital construction era. Well, for the first agenda, I would like to invite Mr. Iwan Supriyadi as the chairman of the organizing committee to present his speech. Please welcome Mr. Iwan. Hello. Hello. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Okay. Can I speak now? Yes, you may speak now. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Let me put it higher to my volume. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, good day, everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, I should like to thank to first of all, Pak Director, Pak Dr. Haji Zainal Nur Arifin, and then all participants, keynote speakers. Also, uh, thank you for joining this international international webinar series one. And. Uh, As you know that uh, the public and international unit, relation unit of Polytechnic Negeri Jakarta got this project, this program from the uh, Directorat uh, General of the uh, Educa Vocational Education of Ministry of Education and Culture. Uh, 
uh, a part of this program, the activities include this uh, uh, conducting this international webinar series one, and there will be another series, series number two, series number um, series number one is about the civil engineering, and we 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 have selected the title. The theme is the civil engineering towards industry and higher education collaboration and employability of the graduates in the digital construction era. As you know that the, the graduates of the Polytechnic must be recruited by the industry. So in this case, the Director General of uh, Vocational Education, Ministry of Education and Culture, they created the link and match program. Link and match program. So the, all the graduates will be will be capable directly involved in the construction industry, in the industry, in this case, in the construction. So I should like to thank also to all the speakers from coming from, first of all, I should like to mention Mr. Mr. K.T. Chang. He's a Dean of the Civil Engineering Mingxin University of Taiwan. And also Mr. Winston, Mr. Winston, He's a CEO of the Topon International Engineering Consultant of Taiwan. And also Mr. Sinda Sai, he's the, he's the Overseas Manager of Strong Survey and Mapping Consultant. And from the Indonesian, my old friend, Professor Sarwono. Are you, uh, I hope you are in a good condition always, and all also the participants. And we all pray to God that the 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 the, the COVID-19 pandemic will vanish will vanish very soon from the Republic of Indonesia. I hope all the participants may enjoy this seminar and we get more and more knowledge from all the speakers. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Mr. Iwan. Excellencies, participants, ladies and gentlemen, we are now going to listen to the opening speech delivered by the Director of Polytechnic Negeri Jakarta. And we also like to request the Director to officially open the seminar. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Zainal Nur Arifin. Thank you, Shari. Is my sound is already good? Yes, already. Okay, thank you very much. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat siang, salam sehat dan sejahtera bagi kita semua. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Zainal Nur Arifin, the Director of Polytechnic Negeri Jakarta. First of all, I would like to welcome, to welcome all of you to our international webinar series one with the theme civil engineering on industry and higher education collaboration to enhance the quality and employability of graduates in the digital construction era. Thank you also for being here with us today. And I, I, I would also express my appreciation, appreciation to the organizers of this event Mr. Uh, Iwan Supriyadi and Dr. Nidia Sofa, thank you so much for uh, leading your team to create this webinar. I heard uh, before that this webinar uh, will be uh, some series. Today is uh, the series one, and maybe the next one uh, will be the series two and uh, the other series. Also, I would like to thank also to keynote speakers in this uh, series, in this same webinar. Uh, first of all, of uh, Professor Kite Chang, Dean of Civil Engineering Mingxin University. Welcome to Polytechnic Negeri Jakarta. Even uh, in virtual, but uh, now we can meet uh, maybe next time we will meet offline uh, in the Mingxin University. 
And the second one is Professor Dr. Insinyur Sarwono Harjo Mulyadi, MSC, MT, MH, uh, as expert in Ministry of Public Work and Housing, Supervisory Board for Construction Service Development Board. And then the, the third uh, keynote speaker is Mr. Winston, CEO of Topon International Engineering Consultant Limited from Taiwan. And then also Mr. Sinda Chai, Overseas Manager of Strong Survey and Mapping Consultant, Taiwan. Ladies and gentlemen, to build a generation of Indonesia who is competent, competitive, and able to keep up with the fast changing of the world of work, we need a strong partnership and synergy between the vocational higher education and industries. We know Mr. Wikan Sakarinto, the Director General of Vocational Education in Indonesia, recently has declared that the policy of link and match between vocational higher education in Indonesia with industries and in enterprises, the purpose of this policy is to improve the graduate competency and also the relevancy of education to the industry need. Their strong partnership will enable education in institutions to, prov to provide students with work placement and intensive, which is, we know, this is a key approach to ensure graduates are, we call, job ready. Not only that, by enhancing the collaboration between vocational higher education and industries, both parties can have a better understanding of creating a system that works for both of them. The webinar participants, Polytechnic Negeri Jakarta has committed to embrace the system by becoming closer to the industry and establishing on ongoing effective two-way partnership in many areas, such as curriculum, standards, career orientation, internship, hiring, and equipment. We have already done this link and match with industry since uh, several years ago. For example, with PT Holcim Indonesia now is PT uh, Semen Bangun Indonesia and also with the other industry or in other company. Through this partnership and synergy, it is expected that the competence of Polytechnic Negeri Jakarta graduates will continue to be updated with the demands in accordance with the needs of industries. We know that to implement this link and match system is not easy, but we do find some challenges along the way. The challenge is keeping the mutual relationship with the industries going and maintaining qualified teaching staff and good instructors. It is also a challenge keeping the curriculum up to date with industries need. To overcome this challenge, such webinar we done today is very important. Through an intense, through an intense presentation, we could obtain more insight, discussions, and experiences. Because we know that in real practice, stakeholders, employers, vocational institution, and students have limited interaction, but appear to be operating in parallel worlds. So by creating this activity with this kind of webinar, interaction can be made effectively. This interaction later can lead to a deeper analysis, for example, on ENG curriculum. The curriculum needs to be developed with the industry. It should be considered 
a living cu curriculum that changes as required and with a focus on the employment of the graduates. Ladies and gentlemen, a theory said that there are three important factors for maximizing human resources. They are, the first is building a flexible education system. And then the second is developing and updating needed skills of the graduates. And the third is enhancing the employability. So we can't deny the fact that high value versus the high value service industries increasingly need highly skilled workers who also have soft skill, for example, skills for teamwork, communication, problem solving, critical thinking, and now digital skills and also management. So we believe through a strong partnership, PNG and industries can create a system that work for both of us to maximize the quality of our graduates. So ladies and gentlemen, finally, let me open this webinar. Please enjoy the interesting webinar today. Thank you very much for the support from the industry's partners of PNGs. And also I see here from the representative of all polytechnics over Indonesia. So I wish you all a very successful webinar. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Well, thank you very much for the opening speech. Next, we are going to have a photo session. I would like to invite all guests, ladies and gentlemen, to turn on your camera and give your best pose. Everybody, please follow my instruction. Are you ready? Panwar? Okay. Okay, page two. Page three. Sudah. Page four. Done. Page five. Page six. Page seven. Page eight. Wow, we have so many pages because we have so many participants. Next. Page nine. Okay. Done. Thank you. Please give applause for all of us. We have 248 participants today and I hope we can go through uh, until this evening. Okay. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, moving right along, it is now my pleasure to invite our moderator, Dr. Hari Purwanto, to begin the session with the honorable invited speakers. Please, Mr. Hari. Thank you very much, Mrs. Tan. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, selamat siang. Salam, Salam sejahtera bagi kita semua. Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya. Salam kebajikan. Xiao Hao, Ni semen sing semen. Today, welcome and a great appreciation to honorable speaker from Taiwan and also the expert, Indonesian expert, renowned overseas, and Professor Sarwono from the Public Health and Housing uh, ministry. And today we are going to listen and learn about what has been explained by the director, Dr. Zainal 
uh, mentioned already. The civil engineering towards industry and higher education collaboration. Today, uh, Polytechnic Negeri Jakarta, Jakarta Polytech, or in now is going to be a Jakarta Tech, <laughs> like uh, Taiwan Tech, or else, how the collaboration can enhance the quality and the employability of the graduates in the digital era. You know, uh, now we are going to learn from Mingxin University Science Technology that already done a lot of uh, examples that we are going to learn today. And we are appreciate for your uh, time and energy to come here, Professor Chang, uh, together with the industry uh, partner from Top One, uh, Top One Consultant Company, and also from Strong Company for mapping and survey company the partner of uh, Mingxin University and Technology in Civil Engineering and Environment uh, Department. There are many uh, industry partners from Mingxin. And actually, we are lucky here. Uh, this uh, webinar attended by not only from the Polytech all around Indonesia, the lecturer, the professors, the students, and also attended by the industries. We see here the industry from uh, state-owned company like Bina Marga, like uh, Huta Makarya, uh, Waskita, Wika, and also from private company. From the other university, from University of Indonesia also attend at this webinar, and also from University of Defense of Indonesia. Thank you very much for coming to this uh, webinar. And what is the special of this webinar? Why are we inviting Mingxin in this webinar? Because Mingxin has a special Indonesian student class that they are doing the collaboration with the industry. As already mentioned by the director Zainal already, uh, they are collaborating with the industry how uh, to learn the examples uh, in the last years practices by Mingxin, their strategic partnership with the industries to design the international quality and also the employability world class in the era of digital. We know BIM from the Ministry of Public Health and Housing, the using of digital BIM, building information model, is a must according to the rule from last year. So there is a, a gap. Yeah, we have a gap, a quality gap. Yeah, the competency gap between what the industry need and also what the university can supply. The competency gap and also from national and the international demand. There is a gap. And also, there is also an employability gap because there is a skill gap that's uh, produced by the university and also the demand from the industry. At last is the digital gap. Some of international university, they have the curriculum of the digital. And digital era, Industry 4.0 has already penetrated to our life. And now we talk about the quality, the employability, and also the digital era. And we can hear from Professor Sarwono that how the Indonesian and also uh, the world to prepare the digital world when it is in the construction uh, era, because in the construction era, we see how about the construction will produce the prosperity of the society, not only Jakarta society, Indonesian society, Taiwan society, but for the world prosperity. And we can listen that how the prosperity is uh, will, uh, will be uh, enhanced. 
I think this is my <laughs> introduction. Uh, I think please feel free for our speakers. First speaker is Professor Kitty Chang. Kwan Chung Seng received his BS degree from National Chengkyung University, NCKU, very famous in Tainan, like ITB, but yeah, NCUT is a world class university in 1980, and his PhD degree from National Chengkyung University in Xinchu, Taiwan. And he served as a professor in Mingxin, uh, University of Science Technology, and currently is uh, the associate professor and chairman of civil engineering and environment informatics at the university. He is conducting several uh, research, linear object extraction, hyperspectral image analysis, and many like pavement, 3D laser scanner, and his major research interest is in the field of environmental remote sensing, geospatial information extraction, engineering surveying, and spatial object analysis. I think, uh, Professor Kichang, uh, please, uh, time is yours, and you may uh, share the screen of your PowerPoint. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, does welcome. anyone can I hear my yeah, does yeah, anyone yeah. can uh, hear Good. my voice? Uh, yeah, very okay, okay, okay for you. Yeah, carry loud on. Loud and clear. Very okay, good. okay. So I share my screen to you. Yes, okay. First, okay. So, uh, so can you see my presentation? Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. We see okay. clearly. So thank you, Dr. Harris, invitation uh, me to invite me to uh, attend this webinar. Uh, I think uh, I feel honored to 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 join this. So uh, to meet uh, this webinar themes. So I use uh, our uh, two pass I program for Indonesia students to introduce our department, how to conduct, in, uh, conduct uh, industry resource to enhance students' employability. So uh, now our department have 10 full-time faculties. Uh, over 70 percentage teachers have a PhD degree and uh, uh, half of the faculty members possess domestic or uh, international recognized license. So, uh, uh, res in uh, recent years, we have uh, we got the big funding from our government Ministry of Education to let us to build uh, some uh, special research center, including centers for disaster mitigation and prevention, and. Uh, including uh, and the uh, environmental re remote sensing research center. And uh, we also have built some uh, special lab, including like uh, NDT, NDT non-destructive testing apparatus. We buy a, a very uh, good oh, yeah. uh, ground resistance instrument. And uh, we also have some develop some big uh, a lab in uh, building information modeling. And then uh, we also have a uh, uh, UAV system. Professor, uh, itu ya, tadi si Pak itu. Sorry. Can you, does anyone? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, okay, okay. okay. So I have, uh, and, uh, most of them, uh, most of the equipment we uh, vote into our class, our teaching, and uh, we also hire some uh, teachers come from industrial company to teach our student uh, to know how to operate them. 
So uh, following have some pictures come from our uh, Indonesia class, two plus I class, uh, because uh, this program only uh, three years. So uh, 1.5 years, they will study in campus. And now uh, they just uh, start their internship uh, uh, in this uh, semester. And uh, in the campus study, uh, we arrange uh, 50, uh, 55 credits for them. And so we just uh, uh, arrange some important uh, class for them, courses for them. And especially, um, for example, on um, surveying practice and uh, some to let them know some uh, map sketch. Uh, and then they also have some construction management or some uh, civil materials. So uh, that's a situation when we have a, uh, during the courses, they take. And we also arrange uh, some, uh, uh, arrange them to, attend some uh, certificate test. For example, this is a mixed concrete test. Uh, even they just, uh, they did not pass in the pen, pen test, but we still uh, uh, encourage them to attend again for this test. And we also have, uh, when they arrive, when they arrive Taiwan, and we apply uh, working permission for them. So uh, in, the, in the end of uh, first uh, semester, they start to have part-time job, uh, including like a uh, uh, top one company. So uh, Dr. Harris also uh, visit them. And you also can see in our department, we have built a, a steel structural model uh, in our department. Uh, this uh, uh, this uh, demonstration room is built by our uh, alumni association. So uh, we also arrange some field trips for them in uh, these three semesters. So to, uh, to enhance, to uh, get our Indonesia student to connect, try to uh, start to connect with industrial companies. And then we also have uh, promote some internship uh, activity in uh, this, uh, in, in recent years. Uh, until now, there are, Six hundred, uh, sixteen hundred. Uh, sorry, a uh, one hundred sixty, uh, student have attend, uh, full semester, full se semester, internship or summer, uh, summer interns. So, uh, uh, so now not not just a beginning from this semester. So we over. Uh, until now, over 40 industrial company have provide, uh, offered us the internship. So uh, we also promote some international internship. So, so this year we have a, a advanced workshop on GPR and the LIDAR slam technique. So we combine Taiwan Association of Professional Civil Engineering and the Professional Soil Water Reservation. Uh, to that, uh, like a uh, Taiwan instrument uh, company to uh, introduce some high-end techniques for the industrial. So, uh, uh, since uh, 1966, we have 10,000 graduate, some graduate for our uh, department. 
So we got some financial support and financial aid from come from our strong uh, alumni, and we we have uh, many uh, alumni uh, distributed in uh, many industrial like uh, company like uh, construction company and the engineering consultant company. And they also provide our student junior to let them to join our companies to have part-time job or, and uh, when they graduate from school, and then they can attend uh, their companies. So uh, let, let me talk about the internship schedule for our two plus I program. Uh, because this semester they will start their internship study. So we arrange like a uh, interview and uh, we visit some companies and to talk about this uh, uh, internship and to let them know our students uh, situation. And then uh, we ar arrange some uh, interview in the summer, during summer vacation. And they, uh, uh, this is a uh, internship interview situation. This is a uh, strong company. There are two students uh, join this company. And now they are uh, like uh, nice uh, female students attend top one now. So, uh, and then uh, this is uh, all of 20, sorry, all of 21 uh, students, they distributed on um, uh, one, seven uh, company now. And so today, so I today, uh, today I invite top one international engineering consultant uh, CEO and uh, uh, overseas representative re representative uh, come come from strong engineering consulting uh, to introduce our student uh, have an intern uh, their intern situation now so uh, then uh, in this uh, in the beginning of this semester, we arrange uh, intern company to have a dis uh, description for the intern co intern content, and then uh, uh, when they when our student decide where he want to go, then we will sign a con a contract between. Uh, company, school, and uh, our students. Uh, following is uh, is a sample here. And then uh, in this semester, we start to visit the intern company now to see our student. Uh, they are what did they learn in the company and. Uh, uh, if they have some uh, opinions or problems, uh, they can uh, talk to us directly. And so, uh, when before the uh, intern, before the intern, our students should uh, uh, make a personal proposal, just like this, and then we will have. Uh, uh, some uh, questionnaire for them, uh, including the company, to listen their opinions. And then we also have some, uh, and in the final, in the end of semester, we will have uh, evaluation for them. Uh, the, sc uh, the score where the company will also have a score and the occupy 60 percentage 
come from the intern companies and our uh, teachers also will have a score for them. So uh, following this is our, uh, uh, my institution for uh, using our two part side program to uh, introduce how to uh, conduct in uh, industrial resource. And our students also make a video like this. Yeah, let's take a look. Maybe it doesn't work, Professor Tan. Oh. Okay, sorry. Uh, One, once again. Let me, uh, sorry. Okay. Try again. Uh, Just click the link. Because the view is not very stable. Uh, okay. It's coming. So this YouTube made by the Indonesian student right now. Yeah, right. Okay, thank you. There is no voice, sir. I think you need to put some a volume. Yeah, uh, you have trouble in transmission. I think the ya bapak ibu semua ini mungkin ada trouble ya. Uh, barangkali uh, kita eh? uh, we can wait. Jadi rupanya ada problem juga dengan Uh, mohon maaf Bapak Ibu semua, kita ada trouble dari Taiwannya. Uh, kita coba menunggu kesempatan sampai uh, berapa menit? 3 minutes. Uh, jika 3 minutes akan kita uh, teruskan ke sesi kedua. Siap-siap uh, Pak Sarwono. Nanti kalau sudah bagus transmisinya nanti kita kembali panggil uh, Profesor Chang <coughs> in three minutes we are going with jadi uh, saya ingin menyampaikan bahwa Indonesian class 2 plus I itu adalah uh, two years plus internship dan mereka uh, direkrut dari berbagai uh, student dari Politeknik Negeri Indonesia tahun lalu diberangkatkan ada 21 dari Politeknik Negeri Jakarta ada empat kalau nggak salah di universitas tersebut dan mereka uh, untuk internship itu bisa part-time atau full-time satu jam itu sesuai dengan peraturan Kemenaker di sana itu uh, 20 kalau part time itu 20 jam per minggu, kalau full time 40 jam per minggu. Dan satu jamnya itu sekitar 150 NT Taiwan dollar. 150 NT 
itu kalau dikumpulkan satu bulan itu kira-kira bisa 12 juta. Jadi Bapak Ibu semua mereka mengongkosi membiayai sendiri sekolah di sana. Kemudian mereka mendapat uh, tuition free ya, mendapatkan tuition free karena didukung oleh uh, government Ministry of Education di sana. Kemudian asrama itu juga uh, diberikan kebebasan. Jadi <tuh> mereka uh, mempunyai lebih banyak uang saku. Kira-kira demikian. Minimal di sana untuk mendapatkan bachelor degree adalah 72 kredit. Ya, jadi ini anak-anak, adik-adik yang ke sana itu kebanyakan memang alumni D3, tetapi um, karena syarat harus mendapatkan bachelor engineering di sana 72 kredit, maka mereka mengambil 72 kredit lagi. Jadi, uh, oke, okay. KT Chang, you come already? Hello? Oke, okay. so, okay. okay. sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, because I disconnect. Uh, oh, I, I have been uh, kicked out from this web, this meeting room. So uh, maybe because the videos later uh, you can see from our web page. Sorry, uh, let me let me share my screen now. Uh, we also can uh, see this video come from uh, our department web page. Later I will show you the, the link for you. You can see the video come from our department web page. Okay. So now thank you for your listening. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Professor Chang. Gang Xie Lao Xie. Thank you. <laughs> Bapak Ibu semua nanti uh, apa presentasi ini akan disampaikan ke Bapak semua di situ ada linknya ke YouTube. Oke. Okay. Thank you very much Professor Keticha. I think we will go into the second session. I would like to invite Professor Sarwono Harjo Mulyadi. Professor Sarwono Harjo Mulyadi is a very long title, Doctor Engineer MSc in Civil Engineering but he's also expert in law. Ya, yeah. he is magister in law and also uh, many engineering professional and also arbitrary and FIDIC member of board director, FIDIC accredited trainer, adjudicator, board of director DRBF, region 2, Eropa, Asia, Africa, DRBF, country representative for Indonesia, and also his uh, the board of supervisor, Uh, lembaga Pengembangan Jasa Konsultasi Nasional, the National uh, Construction Development Board, and professor in construction contract management. I think time is yours, Professor Sarwono. Uh, please uh, give us some uh, vision and suggestion, advice for the collaboration between industry, international standard, and uh, employability and also in the digital era and everything about the construction uh, construction life in Indonesia and also abroad. Thank you. Time is yours. Thank you very much, Pak Hari. So uh, I'm delighted to have this opportunity to say something in this uh, meeting. Yeah. Uh, because Pak Hari told me that Pak Profesor Chang is a very apa namanya? Oh, the somebody who, Professor Chang have good attention to Indonesian education. So I want to share first because I hear that in here also attend this meeting also attended by the people from the consultancy industry in Taiwan. So there is good chance then to discuss about this. Next. Next. Okay. This is just to, to see. When Mr. Hari told me that we have, we'll have this meeting, so I said, okay, this is just a, an example. That one guy, so he is graduated from the 
as a master of science in project management that he said, I conduct some research on the project management knowledge about construction work. I am now ready to apply my ability to handle the project efficiently based on the knowledge they have got in the university. But after he works for the consultancy industry, he find that everything is different between once he get from the university and about the implementation at in the industry. He said, what on earth is thing, this condition during the university? It's difficult, okay? And then they, under, they said, my dissertation is PIM in construction management, construction industry. So he feel very proud of, of his knowledge because he has graduated from a very famous university abroad with the specialization in BIM, building information modeling. But finally, when he works for the uh, consulting company in in his country, for example, in Indonesia, he joined a, a very big uh, consulting company in Nipongkowe from Jakarta. And he started to say, how can I implement the theory that I got from the university? I am the summa cum laude graduate. You have the diploma. So, look. There is two examples. One said, ah, my dissertation is theory nano nano, very sophisticated theory. The another said, okay, my dissertation is only the applied action research. It's very simple theory. Yeah. Why I show that uh, PowerPoints? Because I just want to show that many people now understand about what is the uh, building information modeling that is a support of the technology to the civil engineering industry. But the problem is he only understand the theory, but not the implementation. So that is, I'm, I'm very happy that Professor Chang uh, maybe will assist us to about this one. Because uh, frankly, people only understand what is and why, but not how. Yeah. Or sometimes understand how, but not how to operate. Yeah, that's why I know we should share between the supporting knowledge that we by using the modeling uh, technology, uh, everything with the substance of the knowledge. Because people should understand also the substance of the knowledge. Just, I just want to give this uh, easy example. This is about the, in Indonesia now, the study program of construction, construction management divided into three, four groups. Uh, among others, the claim management knowledge and then uh, dispute resolution and then contract management. Yeah. And then uh, site management, of course. Yeah. So this is about the dispute resolution management that is handling the claim. So we should do some work. This is about the planning on organizing, of course. But people should understand to prepare a claim or in the next step to solve the dispute resolution, to solve the disputes. People should know should have the knowledge on project or construction management first. This is the basic, but they should understand also the legal or contract management. This is what we want to be supported by the technology. That is about the legal and contract management. Uh, how to use the BIM in these activities. This is very important. And the number three is the communication management, because without communication management. We cannot do anything. We have a very sophisticated theory, but we have we do not know how to disseminate this knowledge and how to do another things in relation with this knowledge. And then the most important thing is the time management. Time management is very, very important because in all uh, agreement, in all contract, some limitation, time limitation is there. For example, you should submit it before submit a claim before 28 days of the occurrence at site 
if you cannot submit this one, so all your claim will be just easily rejected. This is very so. This one, two, three, four knowledge should be grouped and should work together. That's why we should have a very, very good team works in this case. And then we should not forget also that we should learn from the success story in business industry and journal and also the library to become the winner. This is usually people forget to read yeah, to read, they always forget this. That's why uh, all the knowledge should be gathered in this, in this, uh, in this works. That in what is the relation with today's meeting? We encourage all of you to think how to collaborate this knowledge, basic knowledge, with the uh, supporting knowledge such as the BIM and others. This is another knowledge in Bahasa Indonesia, of course. That is the employer. This is contract. Contract is there is an employer, engineer, and the contractor. You can read it by yourself. And then this is a five basic points that I want to share with you from the knowledge point of view. Yeah, if we have the contract, because all construction activities being done by the contractors. For example, the ministry have the project. So there is five basic principle I will share with you. Uh, I'll distribute with you uh, one uh, free book from FIDIC. That is the five basic principle, five golden principle. Yeah, I will send it uh, to you through Pak Hari. Uh, you, you can you can have it one, but you can print by yourself. Okay. The duty what number one is the duties, rights, obligation roles and responsibility of the contract participant must be generally as implied in general condition and appropriate to the requirements of the project. So we should remember that this qualification is important in ensuring that the appropriate FIDIC contract is selected. Because sometimes we understand, oh, there is a FIDIC conditions of contract, but which one could be used in our activities, people still, still do not have the knowledge about this. The second is particular condition must be drafted clearly. This is very important because uh, all agreement and understanding between the employer and the contractor made during the tender period must be regarded. This is what why we need the support from the IT. Yeah, because we should record everything incorporated in the contract by addenda and referred to in the letter of acceptance and all the contract agreement. This is very important. Additionally, the particular condition subclauses must clearly indicate the relationship between the newly introduced text and the corresponding general conditions. This is very, very important because mostly, for example, in Indonesia, the particular condition, which is actually the part, usually uh, con the content is to explain the general condition but in Indonesia, uh, some institution use the power to replace the original text. Of course, legally this is okay, but the problem is it may create the ambiguity, become ambiguity. Yeah. Because in some of the particular condition, just say that, okay, we delayed the general condition by the word not use or something like that. Number three, the particular condition again, must not change the balance of risk and reward allocation, but we usually make the contract become unilateral contract. Number four, all time periods specified in the contract for contract participant to perform their obligation must be of reasonable duration. So this is about the time management, as I told you before. Unless it's a conflict with the governing law of the contract, all formal dispute must be referred to a dispute avoidance and adjudication board. This is new established alternative dispute resolution. Yeah. It is very new. And you can have also what is that you can find in the library of the American Society of Civil Engineers. You can download it, download it. 
for free. That is my new new paper is there, just uh, newly uh, published today. Yeah, you can see. You can download for free if you want to know about the contract management. You can download and also the dispute resolution. Yeah, in this uh, case of dispute resolution, we have the Indonesian dispute construction dispute resolution, where I work together with Pak Hari in there. Yeah. The new body to solve the dispute. And it is just a uh, photograph. Yeah, because I now work as a board of director of FIDIC, FIDIC uh, the International Association of Consulting Engineers. And I, uh, most of the consultants in the world is member of the FIDIC. Okay, thank you, Pari, for the time. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Professor Sarwono. I think applause for his excellent presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, now the time is 2.30. I think we still have time. And what is Professor Sarwono already given us an insight is actually the gap in the civil engineering, uh, the gap, uh, digital gap, the skill gap, competency gap, quality gap, employability gap. Uh, the gap is initiating the dispute. Dispute uh, in the digital era that will be uh, initiated the unproductivity. So Professor Sarwono introducing the FIDIC five principles as the sol solutions in the digital era uh, to resolve the, the, uh, the, the gap and also the uh, solve the, uh, the problem, the dispute. So I think the contract construction is actually what is the civil engineering industries uh, targeted? Yeah, the purpose of the civil civil industry is the contract, and the contract is the life of the industry and technology. Okay, I think uh, we'll continue the third uh, speakers. We would like to invite uh, Mr. Windsor, sir. Is uh, the CEO of Top One International Engineering Consultant, a very famous consultant in BIM, uh, Building Information Model. I think in Indonesia now BIM is becoming very popular. Then mm -hmm. I think you can share how you teach uh, our student, Indonesian student, to have an uh, internship. Oh, that is our student behind you, Mr. Okay, uh, please. <laughs> Introduce our, uh, I know that Ika, Ika is from Polytechnic uh, Negeri Jakarta. Hi Ika, and uh, satunya lagi siapa ya? Oh, I'm proud of you. Oh, there's oh, ladies, ladies squad, Indonesian ladies squad. Okay, time is yours. <laughs> Professor Vincent, please. Okay. Have your session. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, that now it's yours. Yes. Yes. Please. So can see. Okay. Uh, thank you for Dr. Harry and the uh, Sana and uh, Dr. Chen. My name is Winston and I'm the CEO of uh, Taiwan International Engineering the Consultants. And uh, it's my honor to share the, our company's the experience with uh, all of you. So uh, you just see those girls, right? Those <laughs> girls are very good. I mean, uh, I like oh. them very much. <laughs> oh. uh, I think they also they enjoy the workplace here. <laughs> So you can see the e card stand behind the other the, uh, students because the, in our company, um, because I actually I'm also a professor in the Zhonghua University. My major is uh, construction management, and uh, oh, okay. uh, I have yeah I have uh, been uh, on the teaching job for a 
around the 20 years then I came out to open the, this company and because of BIM, so we find there's a chance or we set opportunity to integrate uh, the whole the construction the process because in the past uh, for for construction there are uh, many the uh, participants I mean like a uh, uh, structure architecture electric uh, many systems and uh, for each the system that for their drawing them they do it themselves so when we combine them together we call it CSD but in the past uh, we use the 2D to do the CSD and the, that uh, result depends on the experienced uh, engineer but right now we have a beam so we can use the beam as a play, uh, a platform to integrate the, all those the system the, and the, we can find the country the earlier before we really does uh, uh, set up the uh, work drawing. And uh, so when these girls that come here, we use our own way to, to train them. I mean, because this is technique, uh, technical uh, work, not uh, not idea work, or I mean, like um, by the thought, not by proposal, it's by the doing. And uh, when people doing the thing, the, uh, if that is not done by a group, uh, for example, because the, we train a lot of uh, students, the, but the, a lot of them they fail. Why they uh, failed on this the, uh, BIM? Because when they uh, been stuck, I mean stuck, there's no one uh, for them the, to ask. But in our company, the, uh, we can ask the everyone and the, we have a system of education, I mean, by training. So all these the girls, the, they came here and the, actually right now they are very, the, um, they, they are expert on the BIM. And uh, <laughs> even though they, they don't know the, the MEP the before, but uh, because the, we uh, train them and uh, give them the real the projects. So now all of them the, uh, can, uh, do the MEP, the BM work. Okay. I, I think that it's quite a different. So you can see uh, they, they are doing those the, uh, MEP job. Okay. And here is the, our company's the, uh, uh, pictures that you may take a look. So our company is uh, very young. And uh, I, I think uh, uh, from this, the girls, the, if uh, you, your uh, university, or, it's more than you know students want to come to our company very welcome no matter how many okay thank you <laughs> no thank you say, 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 say. yes and let's uh, see um so the top one that is from uh was founded in the 2013 the, at the beginning uh, we are doing the research uh about the uh, asset management bim and the uh, facility management and uh, later on, uh, we uh, started uh, beyond the education. So that one is the uh, only the unit in Taiwan that to give the beyond the education and to give the certificate that, that is approved. That is approved by the government. Okay. And then we have uh, five uh, a certificate. One is architecture, one is uh, civil engineering, and the one is uh, fire, and the one is air condition, and another one is uh, the electric. And uh, so we, also have uh, uh, signed the agreement with uh, uh, Nederland Foundation, the Metaster. Later, I will share the why is that. And uh, the top one, the vision, that is a uh, use, uh, you know, the advanced uh, um, technology to our uh, construction industry because of being the so it's kind of an uh, industry the revolution the 4.0. It's an integrated era. Now uh, we, we, we don't need to uh, invent the more and more because we have a lot of new things. But the point is how to uh, integrate all of those new technologies into our industry. I think BIM is a chance. And here is uh, my profile. You can see um, I got my, uh, actually I have a MIS. That's why I uh, MIS the master degree the, also construction management. But uh, honestly, the, until I started this company, the, then I really know the uh, real world, the, the, I mean, the job side is very, very different from those that are uh, university, okay? 
because this is doing this, not just the stink. Uh, and uh, we uh, need to overcome a lot of uh, uh, trouble, a uh, barrier. So all of those things we need to uh, insist. So that's, that's, that's why I say that it's quite different, okay. Uh, okay, so, and this is an artist of top one. So you can take a look. And this is the certificate that I said that there's a, uh, there are five certificates we offered. Okay, maybe uh, if uh, uh, in Indonesia has the um, interest to adapt this system, we can share the, with you the, to promote this WM the certificate in your country. We can share the, all our uh, experience because I told these girls that maybe later you want to go back, uh, we can go back there and uh, you can go back to you know, promote the behind the education there also. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Uh, okay. And then this is an uh, uh, example the, for the civil engineering, okay. And then this is the bridge, this is the MVP, okay. So you can take a look. And uh, this is uh, uh, for uh, different uh, you know, shape because the, not everything can be done by rivet. This is uh, um, by Katia. And this is the quantity estimation. So we can, uh, because all those the estimation, uh, this is not from rivet, this is from another software. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a formula that depends on, uh, I mean, uh, based on the, the, the rule of uh, the country's uh, architectural rule. So, then the most estimation has the formula that can reduce the conflict between the you know um, subcontractor and the contractor. Okay, this is reinforced, and the, this is the model, the real model. Okay, so this is the revision the sofa and the layers of band uh, that will be represent the air condition and the layers of uh, receiver uh, sensor of. Uh, the temperature and the, and the uh, humid. And the, this is the air uh, condition, uh, I mean, air quality. And the, this is CO. And the, so when we uh, set up the sensor in the, in the, in the rear the, uh, model, we also build a, this is the um, 3D model that, and the, we take a, a work on the, cell phone or in the computer. So then we can have the real time the, uh, detector. So you can see that's the uh, temperature, the humidity. This is the, the real time the indicator, okay, from the model, from the real model. And this also can, uh, not only the, to detect, we also can operate, I mean, remote control. So both, it's a, a two-way, two-way. And this is the platform uh, to moderate, moderate, okay? So you can see all those things that can combine with beam. For example, this is uh, uh, the beam and the there's a, a flow. So you can see all those the indicator, okay? Um, the equipment. This is the, what we have done. And then my duster is uh, with, uh, from our country, um, from the government. Uh, so government officer, we signed an agreement with uh, the my duster um, foundation. This is uh, for what? We call that, uh, it's a kind of uh, uh, use beam as the, the, the base because the foundations think the construction, the, it's uh, the induction that has uh, to match the waste. So we want those buildings that, to have the second hand uh, theory that if the building that want to uh, be given up, so then they, they can put all those the equipment by the beam and the best beam the, on the platform to, uh, to sell the, to other people. So we can recycle the, all the buildings, the um, equipment or lots the material, not just the garbage. And the, the government, the Netherlands, they want to promote this the policy. So they also, uh, you know, they, 
uh, encourage the, their company if they adopt their this uh, my task term, then they can get the more the percentage the, of uh, loan the, from the bank. Okay, so I think this is this is just the introduction of my company. But here I want to share um, for lots of the students the, when they come to the top one. Okay, so I think uh, right now we can see lots of the girls the. Um, on their face is a kind of a ha uh, happy, okay, <laughs> cheerful. Not a kind, yes, not a kind of uh, you know depressed. <laughs> and the, the reason that I uh, quit the, the university the job is because the, you know um, I find that all my the students the, the longer they stay the, in the in the university, the, they are face the more the depressed, okay, <laughs> and. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, uh, then I think the point is uh, education. The, the education there, there is a kind of, uh, they learn something they cannot use, okay? But here uh, in part one, the, because we need to uh, give the result, okay? So we need to overcome uh, a lot of those barriers and we need to have a real outcome. So the real outcome, the, Make them the happy. Make them the feel that they really the can, the, you know, can handle something. I think that is quite important. So the internship is a, uh, a point. So I think the, the when you um, consider about the, the students, the, the internship is a, a very very important part uh, on the whole education. So not just to give them the whole the education, but there's no chance to, to give them the real. The, um, uh, work, work, work experience, okay? And then these girls, then, you know, after I trained them there, actually, I wish they can stay. I wish they can stay there, they're, they're, they're graduate, they can just stay here. <laughs> but if they want to go back, I, <laughs> you know, then I need to ask you that you don't give me more students. <laughs> okay. Oh, welcome, welcome. We'll send you student more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, so there's another, see, uh, there's another, uh, there's another, uh, let, me, let me show you. So um, beside me, there's a, a, another student, uh, uh, he graduated from the, our Atlanta University, from the uh, National Taiwan Technical University. And uh, so how to share, Can I want you Sure. Yeah, stay here. Okay, okay. <laughs> Victor. Okay, use your language. Just say hello to everyone. Hey, hi. Oh, hi. 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 Uh, graduated from uh, under, he is a master student uh, and uh, from other university. And uh, so for those uh, technical part of education, the, I will ask him uh, to train them, okay? And uh, sometimes uh, we have a morning meeting uh, and uh, he can help us uh, to do the trans uh, translator. So this, the girls that stay here, uh, <laughs> I think, you know, they are not just a bit uh, quiet. Or the silent, they really the uh, participant of our company the uh, operation. Okay, and uh, for our company, the, when we have uh, the policy, I will also the uh, print out the one the English the version that for everyone, so they know the uh, the whole company's the uh, policy and the, the technical uh, bulletin. So here they, I train them there as a you know, uh, as a, our former worker here. Uh, and right now they have become the, the base, the really the uh, important, uh, uh, you know, technical the person the, in my company because the, the BIM the right now is, uh, 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 because BIM right now um, is very popular and uh, a lot of companies that want to the technical person. So everyone want to um, the BIM the people. So the flow in, I mean, the, you know, the quick, the enter quick, the enter quick, the speed is very fast. So I need a stable, the, you know, people, unless the, you know, my company always the train the BM people for other people, <laughs> for other company. 
But uh, for this, the students that they stay here, they become the, our stable, you know, force, the stable power in our company. So I really appreciate uh, Mr. Chen, that give me the uh, Dr. Chen, that give me this uh, chance. Also, you know, uh, the, the the Professor Lahari, okay, all of you that give me their this chance that uh, to let me just stay here. So that's all my other <laughs> sharing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Here is applause, big applause for Professor Winston, sir. Oh, thank you very much. If I can mention, I would like to uh, give you a great appreciation to <laughs> teach our Indonesian girl uh, to learn uh, digital, to become digital talent by uh, BIM. And if I can mention, uh, please take care of my girl. <laughs> uh, okay. If sure, I, sure. I can I can mention uh, there are three girls from Polytechnic Negeri Jakarta, uh, Jakarta Tech, uh, Atika, I think he's here, Ika Surya, and then Mawidoh. There are three girls from Jakarta, and from Samarinda, Polytechnic Samarinda is Anis Sulala, and from Padang. Uh, Padang is uh, Dia Hanggreni from Surabaya. Uh, Surabaya is Isro, Isroin Badria. And from Palembang, Polytechnic Sriwijaya, Reva Kumua. And from Bengkalis, Polytechnic Bengkalis, Ainun Kusna. I think on behalf uh, of them, I'm as a parent of them, guardian, <laughs> I would like to say thank you very much for your yeah. guidance and also Professor Chang who can manage our girl to become an international uh, class and they will become a uh, champion uh, in, in the international. I think thank you very much once again and we'll keep in touch. Please do come to Indonesia, to Jakarta and make some networking and fruitful collaboration with us. Thank you. Thank Appreciate. you. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Now we come to the last speaker, Mr. Louis Lai, uh, substitute Mr. Sindasai from uh, the company of Strong. The name of the company is Strong. And uh, uh, they are doing in the survey and mapping uh, consultant. Uh, Mr. Louis Lai, please, uh, time is yours. <clears throat> Okay. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, please. Good afternoon. You may start. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, uh, my name my name is Louis Light and uh, I'm serving as the overseas department secretary in Strong Cooperation. And uh, my coworker Sinda Chai is busy today. So I will be in charge for this session today. And uh, this is Dr. Shi from uh, National Taipei University and uh, also the manager of a uh, geo geotech department. And uh, he's going to set the uh, Indonesian Taiwan Education and uh, Research Center in Surveyor uh, next year. So uh, we can have more connection in the future. And uh, at first, I'd love to briefly introduce strong cooperation uh, we are one of the top uh, surveying companies in Taiwan. And uh, our surveys are include uh, land, hydrographic, aerial, uh, UAV, uh, MMS, and uh, 3D dress. And uh, we also expand our business in a South countries such as Indonesia, Malaysia, and the Timor East. And uh, in this July, uh, two Indonesian students uh, Armiko and uh, Roni from MUST uh, joined our internship program. And uh, during these three months, uh, they are able to apply what they learn in MUST practically. And uh, we also made an interview video to let Armiko and uh, Roni to share their work experience in Taiwan. So uh, let's watch this video.
No voice. Luis, there is no voice. Excuse me, could you guys hear the voice? Yeah. There is Everything's no okay? sound. Could you okay. hear the sound? Not Wait yet. a second. Let me try it once again. Could you guys briefly introduce yourself? So, uh, so say, that's how. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ojao uh, means Ojao uh, Amiko. Uh, in English, uh, Amiko Hanavi. Uh huh. Or in Sumantara Palembang. Mm. Yeah, I'm from Palembang, Sumantara. Mm. And also, yeah, I'm I'm also tied to the uh, Indian band. Yeah, was a also a sway. And I'm Ronnie. Ah, uh, again used Chinese. Yeah, uh, Ronnie. Uh, and my English name is Ronnie. Ronnie will stop up and end, but you can call me Ronnie. And then uh, I am also also San Sway. And then. I'm from oh from Indonesian. I I born in uh, Kupang uh, in east part of Indonesia. Mm. So the capital city is Kupang, and then uh, I I have been here for oh, yeah yeah yeah. I'm can America for <laughs> yeah. one and a half. Yeah, yeah. yeah, one year and a half. So you guys have been been in Taiwan for one and a year and a half. Yeah. yeah. And uh, how long have you worked in strong cooperation? We start from around August, so it's been uh, around three months. Oh, oh so like three months. Yeah. 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 So it's already three months. Oh. So what you guys do during these three months? For me, I'm often use the GPS measuring. Mm. Yeah, we have. I have to do the control point and keep watch of it for an entire day. Mm. And also do often doing leveling mm. where we use the barcode ruler mm. and we have to uh, look for it and uh, take turn to mm. uh, to measure the level of the height of the land. Mm. And also have work with UAV mm. uh, to do a three D building model on the bridge, also on the hotel and around it, mm -hmm. and um, also working on lidar. Mm. That is like it also taking picture with UAV, but on the ground. Mm. I'm working that on the Tainan beach. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah. The, How about you? Uh, Openly, I work with Suhao with a lidar, lidar scanning. Mm -hmm. I I I do the lidar scanning in the so much place oh, yeah. in the yeah i i do the lidar scanning for i think for more than uh, five times yeah he's, yeah, yeah, more than five times he's a lidar expert, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Lighter expert. Yeah. I, I just help the uh, uh my team for uh -huh. the lidar scanning and yeah. yeah, you guys and, do, uh, do a lot of work in yeah. here. Yeah, I also do the total station, I forgot to mention. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Total station, yeah. of course. Yeah. So in here, you have, uh, you, have, you guys have tried so many, so many stuff, and then you have this chance to, uh, to operate um, these devices and uh, this equipment. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe that uh, you guys have been to so many places yeah. during these three months. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally, totally. yeah. So how many how many places have you been to? Uh, well, me or you first? I think you first. Yeah, how many places? If you ask me about how many places, I think I never count that. But there's <laughs> yeah, so much place. Yeah. yeah, I believe that you guys have been to uh, most of the of most of the cities in Taiwan. Right? Uh, not yeah, me. Yeah. Uh, I haven't got to the Tainan. 
Oh, Tainan. Uh, the eastern part of the ah Yunlin. Oh, Taitung, Taitung. Oh, you haven't been oh, yeah. to to oh, this part. Yeah. yeah. But you guys have been to Langyu, right? Yeah. Mm. Whoa. whoa. Yeah. 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 Outside of Taiwan, and mm-hmm. I have a lot of work north. in north of Taiwan. Oh, I see. So we we have a, a different part of work. Yeah. So you guys have been to more places than like me in Taiwan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've never been to Mansu. <laughs> yeah. Never been to Taiyu. Uh, yeah, and yeah. also next month we also go to the island near near Taichung. Near, what is near do you know the name? Taichung? Lu Dao. Lu Dao, yeah. Oh, Lu Dao, Dao yeah. the Green Island. Or? Yeah, Green Island. <laughs> oh, I've never been there before. <laughs> wow, I'm so jealous. <laughs> and I have go to. Uh, I've been the been in uh, Pekan. Uh, And in Pekin, you can see clearly uh, China's China, China my, my land. land. Oh, oh I see. You can see clearly. Yeah, you, you can, can see all the top buildings. Yeah, yeah you can the, see the buildings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a very close place. Uh, yeah, it's very close to yeah, China. Yeah. So like, uh, for you guys, uh, what is the most uh, impressive memory during these three months? Um, for me, it's like uh, it's actually this new experience in Taiwan is a lot mean to me. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But the most is maybe in the Matsu Island. Matsu, yeah. why? Yeah. Uh, because you have to go to the island and the island, and I sl- I have seen like a lot sightseeing. Wow. It kind of remind me of Indonesia. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, because Indonesia is a land of islands. Oh, yeah, 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 basically yeah. many sea, but yeah, yeah. like little island. Oh. Uh, see the site of Indonesia. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the home. So it makes you recall a memory in Indonesia. Yeah, I recall. Yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, but yeah. And for me, I think I think uh, the most impressive. Uh, same with America. I can go to uh, Manchu Island oh. with with the uh, using the ship. And the, and also use use uh go to Pekan by the airplane. Oh, oh yeah. it's really impressive. For, it's that's why it's uh, a small airplane, right? Yeah, it's small and uh, small airplane. Oh, and the uh, I think why I, I say that because uh, it's the first time I take the uh, small airplane oh, and yeah it's go striking to, yeah it's it, weird it's really yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small one okay. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then I in Pekan uh, uh, most, uh, most impressive for me in Pekan uh, I can see clearly the China mainland oh, uh, it's the first time yeah, yeah it's a very good students want to internship in Taiwanese companies uh, what will you guys suggest uh, first time uh, I think you have to learn uh, basic language basically uh, basic, basic language, language yeah. in Taiwan or uh, Chinese, yeah, yeah. or then Chinese limits, and then uh, you may have a high toic uh, score, yeah. maybe 800 or anything, but if you don't learn the local language, mm-hmm. that literally, uh, not entirely useless, but most of the Taiwan people here don't speak English, so yeah, yeah, yeah. you at least need to speak, introduce yourself, where is the bathroom, where I is the, any important place, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to introduce yourself, uh, asking where the direction, asking the food, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. very important. Very important. Oh, no, food. You're starving yeah. to death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, other than language, you have to be brave. You have to be brave. Yeah. You have to be brave to take the chance. You have to be brave to speak. Because yeah. uh, Taiwan don't know us as a white cordon. Because they know we are a foreigner. If we make mistake, uh, they they correct it. If they know we are foreigner. They speak slowly than mm. other than themselves. Yeah. So it's okay to make mistake in language. Just keep practicing. Just keep improving your language. Mm. Yeah. You can do. It. Yeah. yeah. Most Taiwanese are are very nice to foreigners. They yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, they may they may not. Uh, 
foreigners may not be familiar with uh, familiar with uh, Mandarin because Mandarin is very hard to learn. Even for Taiwan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And also, like uh, some of the coworkers, we have the we will use the Google translation. Yeah. In a cell phone, this is a very uh, convenient. Yeah, it's very convenient. Thanks a lot. Thank and you so much. Sorry. Yeah. So say goodbye to the camera. Bye. 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 See you go here. See ya. Thank you. Okay. okay, thanks for everybody's uh, watching. And uh, I remember that uh, the first day I picked Ronnie and Armiko in MUST, they were very afraid and shy because uh, they do not speak Chinese very well. But now uh, their Chinese uh, conversation ability improved a lot and uh, they understand the basic uh, Mandarin language and uh, what's more, they are able to apply what they learn and uh, operate the equipment by themselves. And uh, most importantly, for strong cooperation, it's a um, valuable chance to let us know, uh, know each other's cultures and also learn to respect our difference. And uh, thanks a lot. And uh, I hope everybody have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Big applause for Luis and Dr. C. Thank you also for your invitation to invite our Indonesian uh, student to study in NTU. NTU. Okay, with the yeah, yeah NTU uh, with the fellowship, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, welcome. good. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, Indonesia okay. Students. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. And, I will. Uh, I will. I will post the link of the video in the chat room later. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I, I hope strong company will be more stronger connection with Indonesian. Yes? Yes, thanks yes. a lot. Okay. Terima kasih, Ameiko dari Palembang, Kota MPMP, alumni Politeknik Sriwijaya Palembang, sama Roni dari Politeknik Kupang. Terima kasih. Dan saya melihat ini uh, sudah hampir mendekati acara kita, tapi saya melihat ini dari top one company, saya melihat alumni dari Politeknik Negeri Jakarta, IKA, mungkin kangen sama Pak Direktur Politeknik Negeri Jakarta, atau kangen sama Pak Iwan Supriyadi. Mana Pak Iwan, ya, ada anak buahnya mau ngobrol? Ya, kami beri. <laughs> Beri sebentar, atau ada dosennya nih, ada Ibu Kajur, ada Bu Istiatun, dosen-dosen, silakan uh, berikan apa testimoninya, ya, Ika dan berikan uh, masukan kepada uh, PNJ, apakah yang uh, bisa di apa, uh, dari pelajaran uh, collaboration dengan Top One dengan Ningsin, kami beri. Waktu satu menit, silakan. Apa ya Pak ya? Hmm, intinya pokoknya sebelum ke sini uh, belajar bahasa Mandarin itu wajib banget sebenarnya Pak. Karena kemarin kayaknya kesalahan dari kita mungkin kita belum tahu banget bahasa Mandarin, jadi ke sininya jadi sedikit sulit. Jadi saran dari saya mungkin untuk teman-teman yang mau ke sini belajarin bahasa Mandarinnya, apalagi dari basic buat beli makan belanja ataupun uh, komunikasi simple setidaknya gitu jadi nggak 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 tahu nggak tahu banget gitu intinya kalau kalau untuk PNJ-nya sendiri gimana agar seperti Mingsin kerjasama dengan industri misalkan BUMN dengan konsultan oh, di Indonesia mungkin. apalagi kerjasama dengan top one itu bagaimana ya, gitu? mungkin itu ya karena dari bosnya sendiri tadi top one udah menyarankan dan mau untuk kerjasama mungkin bisa diajukan antara bos-bosnya gitu oke baik terima kasih dari ladies and gentlemen I think we uh, we come to well our time is limited we actually we, we still have time but I think we should end our uh, precious uh, webinar. I thank you very much for the excellent presentation and advice. 
uh, start from Professor K. Chang. I think we uh, keep in touch. Professor Sarwono, also please uh, guide us for how to enter the uh, international uh, construction era uh, in the you know uh, dispute because we are dealing with the overseas contractor in Indonesia. More and more uh, construction company coming to Indonesia, then we are also would like to be the competitive. We can have contract with abroad, yeah, the Philippines, ASEAN, and Africa. I think we should go international in the construction company. And FIDIC is becoming a more and more uh, a weapon to be an, a competitive and Indonesian uh, construction expertise. And also, thank you very much for our uh, uh, guardian for our ladies, yeah, Professor Winston Sure, Professor, uh, thank you very much teaching our girl there, and thank you for also for inviting more girls or boy. <laughs> thank you very much again. Uh, we will invite not only the student but also we will send you the lecturer, yeah, because uh, there is uh, there are possibility to collaborate more. For example, to have a, <clears throat> a double degree program in uh, industry and uh, university collaboration with the digital era. And thank you very much for your guidance, Professor Winston, sir. And also, brothers, Louis, 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 eh, Louis Lon. Ah, thank you. And thank also, you. Dr. C. Thank you, invitation for our student to come to NTU. Yeah, for sure. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy uh, this webinar to all participants for all for the world. I think uh, uh, we close. We, we come to. It's already discussed. Yes, so we don't need the. <laughs> oh, doctor. Doctor. <clears throat> Winter. I'm inviting a, a small question from the participant. If you would like to have some a direct uh, question and answers, is there any? I think in the chat box is already. Uh, I answer all the question in the chat box, and. In the audience, there are still 218 participants still active, listening and uh, <clears throat> participating in our webinars. I think it's quite a lot, uh, more than 200 are attending our webinars, and we will continue our collaboration. Okay, so we, if there is no any question, I think we'll uh, conclude our session and now we are going to closing ceremony. I will give uh, the time to the master ceremony, please. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hari. The sessions and discussions were absolutely amazing. I believe they are beneficial to us all. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up this wonderful webinar. Please don't forget to fill in the attendance list given in the chat box. As the master of ceremony, on behalf of the committee, I would like to say thank you to all participants and the invited guests. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Good evening, stay safe, stay healthy, see you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ah. Thank you. Mr. Iwan. Hey, Pak Sarwono. Pak Profesor. Muda, ya. Profesor. Iwan awet muda. Pak, Iwan awet muda. Pak Profesor Sarwono. Yo. Kapan kita ke Zen lagi? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, ini direkam nih, direkam loh. <laughs> Rupanya masih kangen-kangenan. Eh, bye, cacian, cacian.
<tuh> Tutup aja langsung.